Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. And we are meeting once again with lecture 14 of Business English. Well, uh, we have started our series of workshops where we are trying to have hands on experience of all the knowledge that we have uh, and the subjects and the topics that we have covered so far and we could get uh, you know, information about. Now, this is the time to apply that information on practical situations that you have that you are coming across during these workshops so welcome to the second workshop of the series where you are going to learn um, about letter writing and although we we covered informal letter in our previous workshop in lecture 13 we are going to do letter writing but this time the formal letter in today's talk that is lecture 14 we will also try to have um, a practical experience of memo writing, informal and formal. And if, if we have more time, we will move on to do emails and uh, letters. All right, so let's start with our uh, letter writing workshop, but formal letter this time. Are you ready? Okay, so I repeat the pattern that we are going to follow. Um, you are going to have vocabulary. Uh, drill vocabulary exercise which will not only refresh your understanding of the words that you already have but may also give you new words that are important for you to know for the business understanding business scenarios and this particular scenario that we are going to um, you know go through for our reading comprehension and or for our functional analysis and it is not to forget that the activity we are going to have it's for letter writing and this time it is for formal lettering formal letter all right, here you are. Look at the screen. You have multiple choice questions, and these questions will help you understand your information, will help you, uh, you know, uh, enrich your uh, knowledge, vocabulary knowledge, item knowledge for uh, letter writing. Well, uh, so let me start with the questions. I'll, 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 I'll put questions onto you with four possible options, and you will pick the right answer, and I'll click the answer for you. Here you go. A part of an organization which performs a particular function is called a department, a limb, a branch, or an office. What do you think? Maybe a limb? No, a limb is a part of body. Branch. Branch does all the functions together. Office. Well, offices can be many. It does not mean an office belongs to something. Maybe an office inside a department can be an organization which performs a particular function. Let us check. Here you are. So you need to think about all the options and make logic. The second question is, the opposite of permanent is short, temperament, permeable or temporary. Well, permanent and term, term permanent. This is wrong. This is right. So temporary. All right. Someone involved in a business deal may be called a dealer, fiddle, party, contract. Well, what do you think? Let us try with this party. And that's correct. In the first instance, uh, is another way to say, for example, at this moment, to begin with or at once? Well, what do you think about, for example, na, at this moment, at once, or to begin with? To begin with is the right option. A word meaning finish. Or end is termite, return, transient, or terminate. Check terminate, and that's the right answer. A word meaning before the end of is within, finally, restart, and dent. Well, before the end of is before the end is within okay if you dispense with something you dispense with employ it sign it 
stop using it or buy it cheaply. Well, you dispense it, you stop using it. Things you can do well are your goods, skills, disabilities and praises. Goods you can do well are your skills that you can do well with. Okay, to watch and check is to overlook, supervise, consult and regard. Overlook, supervise, consult and regard. What do you think? Well, 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 well. To watch and check is to supervise. Finding how an organization works is called learning the repos, finding the cheese, getting to hang out, reading the grape, reading the grapevine. How finding how an organization works is called getting to hang out, finding the cheese, learning the ropes. So you are learning the ropes. Someone who stands on his own feet is well balanced, of good standing, footloose or independent. Independent. Okay. A period of two weeks is called a half month, fortnight, baker's dozen or half moon. What do you think about fortnight? <laughs> You're right. If you are part of an enterprise you are on board, you are partitioned, you are concluded or you are in touch. What do you think about on board? Okay, that's right. Polite and friendly is um, obsequious, intimidated, curd, cordial. Cordial. The head of a company is the CIC, HQ, MD or VIP. What do you think about MD, Managing Director? Okay, so this was our vocabulary preparation as well as refresher for formal letters. So let's move on to our reading comprehension. All right, students, um, this is the second part of our uh, formal letter um, workshop and you can see a formal letter on the screen for your analysis. Look at the letter closely. Look at the format, the salutation, the subject line. First of all, identify which format is this. It's blocked, semi-blocked. Look at the punctuations. Open punctuation. Do we have open punctuation? Look at the font justifications. Right justified, left justi justified. Look at the spaces between paragraphs. And the signature line, Com complementary close. Look at the now. Look at the internal organization. And to look at the internal organization, we need to go through the text. We need to read it. And here I go and read it for you. I am delighted to inform you that your application to work at Biscuit Investments has been successful. And we are prepared to offer you a post as a portfolio manager in our stock trading department. Okay, this post will be temporary in the first instance to begin with, with each party able to terminate with one month's notice. However, your employment contract will stipulate that within nine months, Biscuit Investments will either offer you a permanent place or dispense with your services. As you are aware, Biscuit are an established trading house with a long history of dealing in the LSE, London Stock Exchange. We are sure that you bring the necessary skills and abilities to complement the strengths of the, of the present team. In the first instance, um, you will be working under the supervision of, your, of our Miss Dude, who will help you learn the ropes. 
It is expected though that you will be able to stand on your own feet within a month, after which you will report only to Mr. Barwell, the department head. Please find enclosed a copy of the employment contract, which we require you to sign and return within a fortnight. If you have any questions, please contact our Mrs. Murdith, who will be happy to assist you. May I also take this opportunity of welcoming you on board at Biscuit? Your quarterly, Magnus Blake, Managing Director. Well, so you are already familiar with the scenario. We are talking about Mr. Blake sending over uh, portfolio manager, Biscuit Investments, um, uh, informing him about his, you know, uh, and we are prepared to offer you a post and, and offering him a post to Mr. Ivan English. Well, so the questions are there. I want you to pay close attention, think critically, and answer these questions. The purpose of the letter is to congratulate Ivan, wish Ivan success, give Ivan a job, or to prepare Ivan as a manager. Well, the second question is, um, Ivan will be employed at the end of, uh, uh, for at least a month, for at least nine months, until he's fired, until he resigns. Okay. At the end of nine months, Ivan may be unemployed, Ivan may have a full-time job, both A and B, either A or B. Okay. Who is Miss Dodie like, likely to be? Ivan's boss, a colleague, a member of the LSE, Mr. Balwell's secretary. All right. When starting at Biscuit, Ivan will be independent, on trial, an apprentice dispensed with. All right. Question number six. Where is the employment contract? Arriving within a fortnight with Mrs. Murdit, with Mr. Miss Doodle or Miss Dude, with the letter. What does Miss Miss signify? Master of Business Science, Manager's Secretary. Miss or Mrs. or Mestem. Okay. Does Biscuit Investments have other portfolio managers? Definitely. Probably. Probably not. Certainly not. Well, I give you a minute to form your answers. Mark them. Have your logic behind. You can write them down. You can take your notes so we can move on to our discussion and analysis section. All right, should we start with our analysis? Okay, here you are. The very first answer is C. Why? The purpose of the letter is to give Ivan a job because the letter tells Ivan that he has the job if he wants it. It also congratulates him on getting the job but that is not its main purpose. It does not wish him success and it assumes uh, he is already prepared to be a manager. Alright and look at question number two. Ivan will be employed for at least nine months, a month, until he is fired or un until he resigns. If Ivan resigns or is given notice the day he arrives, he must still work a month. He may work longer, but it is working. It is wrong to say he will work until he resigns because he may be fired. And wrong to say he will work until he is fired because he may resign. So, the right answer is A, for at least a month. He has to work for a month at least, no matter what. And... The third question is, at the end of nine months, uh, at the end of nine months, the company has to decide if they want to offer Ivan a permanent job. We do not know what they will decide, but it will be only one of these options. And the right answer is D, either A or B. 
Now, fourth question is, who is Ms. Dude likely to be? It is probable that uh, Ms. Dude is a, is a colleague. A secretary has different skills and would prefer be a poor supervisor. Um, after a month, Ivan will be un unsupervised, so Ms. Dude is probably not a boss. She will certainly not work for the LSE. So, uh, your answer for question B, uh, question 4 is B, a colleague. Now, question number five, when starting at Biscuits, um, Ivan will be independent, on trial, an apprentice, or dispensed with? Well, the right answer is on trial, because the company will try Ivan, so he's on trial. In the, in the, in the UK, in the, the culture we are talking about, apprentices are generally only used in manual trades. And we know Ivan will not be completely independent, because he will be supervised. Um, and then, where is the employment contract? Arriving within a fortnight with Miss, Miss Murdeth, Miss Dude, or with the letter? Well, the right answer is with the letter. Because the employment contract is with the letter, as shown by the words, please find enclosed, as this is the copy he will sign. It is the actual contract. Now, um, what does Miss signify masses of business size manager secretary miss or missus or mestem well in english miss signifies only that the person is female just as mister signifies a male it is used when it is not important if a person is married or not so you are probably ignoring the marital status or when you do not know if the person is married it is pronounced miss okay now, the eighth question and the last question of the analysis is, does Biscuit Investments have other portfolio managers? Well, the answer is B, probably. Uh, we know Ms. Dude is probably a portfolio manager, but the key is where the letter says, as a manager in our stock trading department. If Ivan was to be the only one, the letter would probably use the definite article or no article, the manager. It's as a manager, so we can say probably. That was the second part of our uh, um, exercise and activity. This was um, reading comprehension. Now you are going to move on to a functional analysis. All right. The third part of our um, workshop regarding formal letters is a functional analysis of a conversation and this time the questions you are going to follow are uh, it's a conversation between Peter and Sally uh, the people who are working with Ivan in his new office as a portfolio we know that Ivan got a job as a portfolio manager now you are going to read this article read this conversation rather and you will answer the questions number one how do Sally and Peter feel about Ivan? Number two, what is the relationship between Sally and Peter? Number three, who is better at their job? Number four, um, that you are going to do all these three questions um, soon after we are done with the analysis. And this time, I see that whether you are able to do the uh, sentence by sentence analysis yourself or not, because uh, in the previous workshop and in this workshop as well, what I'm doing, I'm trying to give you sentence by sentence analysis so you are tuned to it. I want you now when I'm, when I'm offering you, you know, this, uh, giving you, assigning you this task, you do sentence by sentence, uh, sentence analysis and match your analysis with mine when we are discussing it. So let's start with the, with the uh, conversation. Okay. Peter and Sally. Peter, so you are babysitting next month, teaching the new boy all about it? Sally, well, we all, we all have to start sometime. Um, I just hope he's okay. Peter, just as well, I am very busy with this month. Um, or old Barwell would have given the job to me. Sally, of course. Peter, so he's looking after the Welton portfolio. I don't see why Barbell couldn't have given that to one of us and given the new boy something more routine. I could do with a, with a new challenge. Sally, I thought you said that you were very busy this month. Peter, I am. 
We may not all have um, high yield portfolios like you do, but we all have things to do. I have some very interesting prospectus at the moment. Sally, I wonder why this Ivan left um, Bellwether. Peter, they probably threw him out, stealing other people's work. Sally, oh, calm down, Peter. You have been complaining for ages about being overworked, and now we have someone to share the work. All you can do is complain. Peter, it is all right for you. Um, if the work slows down, it's not you, you who will go. Uh, you are the boss, blue-eyed girl. I've just had a few good months. It will be your turn soon. Yes, you are going to have to watch out for yourself and this Ivan. Any mistakes of his and you will be blamed. <laughs> Sally, oh dear, do you think so? All right, here you are. So what an interesting conversation between the, between the colleagues at Workplace um, Biscuit Investments. So let, let us have our analysis. First of all, we will, you know, discuss it sentence by sentence. Starting from the beginning, Peter uses, Peter's use of language is slightly uh, derogatory and um, patronizing. He does not like the idea of hiring this team boy or if hiring, then giving him the work that is of very important, that is of high importance. Well, um, Sally worries, uh, uh, worry, uh, Sally, Sally's worry is that Ivan will be someone she doesn't like. She's neutral about helping him. Um, all right. Um, Peter, you know, wants to explain why Sally is supervising Ivan and not him. He suggests he would have been the boss first choice. Well, Sally's not interested in discussing the, the matter. Um, and Peter is rather jealous of Sally's new responsibility in Ivan's portfolio. Notice how one of us becomes I. It's only I, not we. All right. Sally is finding Peter a bit irritating, so she shows him that he is contradicting himself. <clears throat> Peter is very defensive, and he shows that he knows that Sally's portfolio is doing better than this, but they're better than his, but he hints that this will change soon. Sally doesn't care and probably doesn't believe uh, that Peter has some interesting prospects. She is worried about Ivan. Peter is worried that Ivan is going to take some work from him. He's negative towards him right in the beginning. Uh, Sally is not worried about Ivan taking her work. She thinks they have enough already. Peter thinks that Mr. Barwell prefers Sally's work or to his. Sally tries to explain her success in a way that, that won't make Peter jealous. Uh, Peter is looking for a way to upset Sally all the time right from the beginning and make her feel bad about supervising Ivan. Sally has not thought of that. Now she is worried. Okay, so uh, if we analyze the answers, uh, Sally and Peter work in the same office with the same type of work. Sally is better at the job than Peter, that is very obvious, and Peter often complains. And he does not like it when other people do better than he does. He also thinks he is more important than Sally, and he should have got the job of looking after the new person. Sally does not like Peter very much, and she is worried that if Ivan is like Peter, the two men will work together against her. She's not worried about Ivan doing better than her at work because she knows she is good at it. So, this was the analysis for formal letter. And we are done with our first topic of the workshop. Now, we are going to start with our second topic of the workshop, that is memo writing. Okay, so let's start with our um, memo writing workshop. And in memo writing, we are going to deal with, first we are going to deal with informal memos. And again, we will go through the same procedures of doing some vocabulary drill, getting into a reading comprehension, and we'll do some functional analysis to improve our understanding of, the, uh, of this business genre. Okay, so let's move on to our um, vocabulary items. Uh, and you can see your questions on the screen. Please read the question, question number one. A word to the wise, what does it mean? You have four options. Quick bit of advice, unwanted advice, unnecessary advice, or unhelpful advice. What do you think? 
I want you to mark your answer and see if you are right since it means quick bit of advice well customize it's a it means a pay a kind of tax or be in the habit of doing change to an individual's requirements or get used to a new situation well the right answer can be change to an individual's requirements a full-time employee works for just one company works long hours does not take holidays works in the evening well full-time works for one company how do you sweeten a deal well you have four options bribing improving relationship inviting someone for a lunch or dinner or increase what you are offering maybe increase what you are offering okay I get 45 K a year what does this mean 45 K can be 45 days leave getting fat or maybe 45,000 earning earning okay a long shot is an unpleasant person an investment for the future someone who talks too much something which probably will not happen maybe this one is right will not happen okay if you go for something you decide to try it are addic addicted to it argue about it take it from someone else you decide to try it if you punch a time card you often get angry hang angry you leave a job you're quite old you work regular hours you punching a time card means you work regular hours performance related pay uh, means you get more money for good work you get less money for poor work your salary is not fixed or all of the above maybe all of the above when you jump ship you suddenly get good results you have you move to another town or go without telling anybody you sell something important it's go without telling anybody information moves from more easily if you have a swamp link obfuscation or breakdown maybe it's the link that we are referring to yes something valuable or useful well what do you think encumbrance white elephant asset or liability asset on the spot can mean bad mannered dirty immediately well planned well the right answer can be immediately on the spot something you don't have can be called irrelevant lacking mandated or unfounded lacking someone who is head haunted is stolen from another company friend from his job promoted set on a training course stolen from another company here you are okay so we are done with our refresher of vocabulary for informal memos and ready to start with our uh, reading and anal functional analysis of the informal memo let's move on all right so we are ready to start with our reading comprehension of an informal memo look at the screen you have a sample of an informal memo you can see that this is written to Margaret this is written from Magnus Black and what kind of memo is this it's an informal memo I want you to read it carefully and see if you can answer the questions well let me read it for you like just a word to the wise before you interviewing young Ivan English tomorrow remember that his, his sole concern will be to customize a portfolio for a major uh, major client make sure that he understands that although he can choose the companies in the portfolio he must not have less than three companies or more than six I hope he will be prepared to work on those terms 
Also, you might like to try to find out how he would feel about working as a consultant instead of a full-time employee. There are various tax advantages for both him and us, but he might be reluctant to give up the uh, security of a full-time job. To sweeten the deal, you could tell him that we are prepared to go up um, an extra 8K a year if he's prepared to work on these terms. But I think it's a long shot that he'll go for it. Well, as it usual um, we, with our company, we don't expect him to punch a time card. However, he must make sure that he's available for meetings and when we need him. I understand that uh, with his, first, his last company, there was a strong performance-related element to his uh, pay, and I suggest that we keep it going with him here. Let him know that we are aware that he did not tell his last company he was planning to jump ship. Uh, fortunately for him, they recognize that it's a good idea to have somebody who can act as a link between us. Um, you can also tell him that if he tries anything like that with us, he will find the financial consequence quite painful. On the whole, I think this young man will be an asset to the company. Uh, so if everything goes okay at the interview, you can offer him the, good, uh, the job on the spot. Let me know how it goes. Best regards. And there is, a, there is, a, um, there is, there is some uh, second post thought. Uh, incidentally, remember we are still lacking a system manager. Can you find out why it's taking so long? This is getting urgent. And if we have to headhunt somebody, we will. Okay, so look at the questions that you're going to answer now. At Biscuit Investments, Ivan English will work for at least three companies, for more than six companies, for one company, for many different companies. What advantages would Ivan get as a consultant? More security, less tax, more money, both B and C. At Biscuit, Ivan must work on 8K a year not punch a time card, learn to sweeten deals, keep in contact. How was Ivan paid in his last job? Completely according to results, partly according to results, a salary of 8k per year, both B and C. Uh, what is meant by anything like that in para 4? Leaving without warning, uh, causing financial consequences, acting as a link, or talking to his previous company. If he is an asset, if Mr. Black agrees, if uh, Ivan will get the job, if he's an asset, if Mr. Black agrees, if Mrs. Murdered thinks he should, or immediately. Okay, uh, now the comment about a system manager is agenda, postscript, appendix and addendum or the last question is how would you describe the tone of the letter friendly rude vague or business like all right I give you a minute to think about your answers and then we are going to discuss it all right so let's discuss our answers now for the very first question, the answer is B, for more than six companies. Uh, for the second, the answer is C, more money. For the third is, at Biscuit Ivan must learn to sweeten deals. Okay, how was Ivan paid in his job, in his last job? It is completely according to results. What is meant by anything like that in para 4? Question number 5, the answer is leaving without warning. Ivan will get the job is immediately. The comment about a system manager is a is an appendix. How would you describe the tone of the letter? It's business-like. Okay. This was the second part of the of our workshop regarding an informal memo, and um, now what you are going to do, you are going to have um, uh, our our listening uh, activity exercise of the of the talk, and this time you are going to listen to a businessman, uh, an interview with 
Armand and again uh, you are going to listen to interview for certain information and the first time when you will listen to the interview you are going to uh, answer uh, you're going to put the following information in the order you hear that a job he would have liked to have done a typical day at work how he get his job job title working with other cultures so uh, please listen carefully because this is how he's he's talking about um, uh, he's giving an interview and he's talking about his job life uh, and job routine so uh, please keep in mind that you need to put these things into an order uh, once you're ready I'm going to play the audio and you will mark your answers I hope you're ready now let us start my name is Armand Le Corchet. I've been working in a smart card company which name is Oberture Card Systems, French company but worldwide spread. And uh, I'm working as a solution director, meaning software edition, development and deployment. Typical day at work uh, beginning around 9, uh, will end around 9.30 to end in the evening. It's a very, very long day with maybe one, one hour, one hour and a half break for lunch time and uh, well 40% of the uh, working day is dedicated to email reading and answering this is kind of problem today but this is it and uh, most of the time this is customer relationship by email by phone uh, meetings of course meetings with the team and uh, as a solution director my main activity is to organize uh, the whole team activity all along the day and to anticipate to schedule and of course to solve issues in fact, this is my first job. I've been working in this company for nine years and uh, I began there as a software developer uh, after I completed uh, at the university. Uh, then I became project manager and then I became uh, first team leader and then director. Okay, this is just a funny story because in fact, in a, in a few words, uh, most of my studies I, uh, I did it with a very, very good friend, very close friend of mine. Uh, and uh, when we, we've been, uh, we've, we'd been graduated together, uh, in fact, it, he, he began to look for some job. And, um, and in fact, he found a job in a software company, a startup, startup company. And uh, while uh, his uh, interview, in fact, he came with our project report where both names were reported. And the boss of this startup just asked, okay, and um, what does the other guy doing at the moment? Nothing, okay, he wants to work. Maybe I can ask. So in fact, uh, this is like that. If I select one thing, the chance to work worldwide with different culture to meet people from every country. This is really, really this, uh, this, this exchange with people, uh, cultural exchange. It's always, uh, always a pleasure to meet people, uh, to, to work with them. In a very short trip, we don't have the time to visit and discover the country. At least we discover these people by working with them. My company is a French company, so uh, of course we have French policies, French habits. Uh, some are good, some are bad, and that's right. That, that it's very, very interesting to uh, uh, maybe to mix it with a foreign uh, way of working, uh, uh, different culture, uh, and this is uh, this is really the interesting. Okay, two um, two possibilities. In fact, first one pilot uh, because I'm crazy about that. Uh, it's incredible uh, the pleasure you can have when you are in the sky and just flying in the sky. This is something incredible for me. And uh, and the other one uh, is very close to my um, to my hobbies. In fact, uh, would be certainly to have uh, some uh, some company to build uh, to build. Uh, um, uh, Houses, but uh, you know, uh, coming uh, dealing with uh, all these environmental things, etc. All right. I hope you are done with that. Now, please pay attention to the questions that you can see on the screen. The second sets of questions, and you have to complete the information for the question number two, three, and four. Question number two basically demands you to circle the correct answer and question number three wants you to choose a word from the box to complete the sentence according to what you hear in the interview and 
Question number four asks you, how did Airman get his job in the company where he works? So it is directly about getting his job, and so you have to be, you have to take that information out of the interview. And I play the audio. My name is Armand Corche. I've been working in a smart card company, which name is Oberture Card Systems, French company, but worldwide spread. And uh, I'm working as a solution director, meaning software edition, development, and deployment. Typical day at work, uh, beginning around nine, uh, will end around. 9.30 to end in the evening. It's a very, very long day with maybe one, one hour, one hour and a half break during for lunch time. And uh, well, 40% of uh, working day is dedicated to email reading and answering. This is kind of problem today, but this is it. And uh, most of the time this is customer relationship by email, by phone, uh, meetings, of course, meetings with the team. And uh, as a solution director, my main activity is to organize uh, the whole team activity all along the day and to anticipate, to schedule, and of course, to solve issues. In fact, this is my first job. I've been working in this company for nine years, and uh, I began there as a software developer uh, after I completed uh, at the university. Uh, then I became project manager, and then I became uh, first team leader and then director. Okay, this is just a funny story because, in fact, in a, in a few words, uh, most of my studies I, I, I did it with a very, very good friend, very close friend of mine. Uh, and uh, when we, we've been uh, we've, we've been graduated together, uh, in fact, it, it, it began to look for some job, and um, and in fact, he found a job in a software company, a startup startup company and uh, while uh, his uh, interview in fact he came with our project report where both names were reported and the boss of this startup just asked okay and um, what does the other guy doing at the moment nothing okay he wants to work maybe I can ask so in fact uh, this is like that if I select one thing the chance to work worldwide with different culture to meet people from every country this is really, really this, uh, this, this exchange with people, uh, cultural exchange. It's always, uh, always a pleasure to meet people, uh, to, to work with them. It's a very short trip, we don't have the time to visit and discover the country. At least we discover these people by working with them. My company is a French company, so uh, of course we have French policies, French habits. Uh, some are good, some are bad, and that's right. Uh, that it's very, very interesting to uh, uh, maybe to mix it with a foreign uh, way of working, uh, uh, different culture, uh, and this is uh, this is really the interesting. Okay, two um, two possibilities. In fact, first one pilot uh, because I'm crazy about that. Uh, it's incredible uh, the pleasure you can have when you are in the sky and just flying in the sky. This is something incredible for me. And uh, and the other one uh, is very close to my um, to my hobbies. In fact, uh, would be certainly to have uh, some uh, some company to build uh, to build uh, um, uh, houses. But uh, you know, uh, coming uh, dealing with uh, all these environmental things, etc. All right. So I hope you are done with your answers. And let me, ha let me discuss answers with you so you can check how far you are right in your answers. So for the very first question, where we had to put the following information in the order that you hear in the interview, please find out that you have put the right things in the uh, uh, you know, answer. The very first thing that he talked about was his job title. Then he talked about, as, uh, about a typical day at work. Then he talked about how he get his job. Then he talked about working with other cultures. And finally, he talked about a job he would have liked to have done. For question number two, um, you have to um, encircle the right option. So the right options for question number two A is software development. Question number two B is international. Question number two, C is France. Question number two, D is working with different countries. And question number two, E is pilot. All right. Now question number three, you have 
The very first questions answer as half. Number two, forty percent. Number three, first. Number four, while. Number five, when. Alright, and the last question is answered as a friend of his went for an interview and the person interviewing him asked if armed was also interested in working for them. When he saw armed armed's name on a report that his friend had brought to the interview. That was all about the listening activity of the day. Okay, after having this uh, wonderful interview by um, Armand, we are going to have our vision for our resume writing that we covered in the last lecture. So, let's talk about a few things that, that may refresh your knowledge and may give you a new, uh, some new knowledge about resume writing. There are a few questions that are frequently asked I, I would want to cover in, in the revision bit regarding resume writing. So, what we discussed about resume writing is that it defines business competitive resume and we, we, we can also talk about formatting, content and some frequently asked questions in this revision for resume writing. So, you, you know that your resume is a critical step at the beginning of a job search process, an advertisement and marketing tool or a written pitch, a screening tool for your capabilities and skills, an assessment of your value, a document that leads to an interview, not a job yet, a first impression that you, that you make and a stand-alone document. And it is all in specification to your target audience that you are dealing with. So you need to strategize first. Importance to do prior to deciding on format and contact. You need to ask the few questions. Um, who am I? Who do I want to be? And what is my brand? What do I sell? Keys to getting it right is that think ahead right to the future. Emphasize specific skills to match the career you are seeking. And write to your reader the target industry and the function that you are going to serve to. Market yourself by only including what's important to your reader. Do not write everything about yourself, but tell what your, your reader wants to know about. Now, a good resume is formatting we have discussed is a one full page only, unless more than 10 years of related work experience, then you can move on to your resume pages. But section in this order, heading names may vary, but you are going to talk about your name and contact information on the top, then education and your credentials, your experience in work or profession related uh, uh, details and then your activities and any kind of additional information like your community involvement, your language skills, etc. Um, uh, your, 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 your resume has to be easily scan, uh, scannable for skills, results, job titles and company names just in 30 seconds. So you need to organize in reverse chronological order, most recent experience on the top and then going in the same way. Uh, try to write bullet points and not into paragraphs, so make it easily readable. Balance appropriate amount of white spaces versus text. Don't make it overcrowded, don't make it all the, you know, white space in there. Use graphics, tab uh, tables or logos if appropriate. Differentiate by font style. Best to use is Arial, Book and uh, Antica, Bookman Old Style, Century Gothic, uh, Gorman, G Georgia, Thoma or Veranda. Resume are in Times Roman. 90% resumes are in Time New Roman. So, but do not make your, excuse me, <coughs> Do not make your resume a hodgepodge of different fonts. Always go for professional hot, uh, 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 fonts and try to be in 11 or 12 font size and try to stick with one or two font size so to make different, you to differentiate between sections. And a good resume um, provide the content like current and previous job responsibilities represent your skill and result in addition to general duties and responsibilities. So do provide that. Um, it shows the impact your performance has had on the department, project, organization, or company. So do have a mention of it. Quantify information results where possible. For example, achieved 80% education of accidents, saving company 1.2 million. So try to provide facts, and then you should be able to prove your facts as well. 
prioritize bullet points beginning with the most relevant or most Im, um, impactful first and use action verbs descriptive of your skills to start each bullet point see link on following slide um, show promotions or advancement by titles and dates and no outdated or irrelevant acti activities should be there use that unless it is a significant accomplishment skill or unusual talking point um, there are some format related questions um, some people say that why should my, my resume be only one page well um, it, it is a highlight of your unique different uh, differentiators specific to your career goals and does not list everything unless you are an experienced person who has certain things to mention uh, you know um, for sure in your resume all right uh, this this web this screen shows you different helpful websites where, which you can use as as a resource bank to uh, design a, a an effective resume for your for your needs for your job needs job search needs so you can see there are there is a list of action verbs that you can you can use to talk about your capabilities your your skills and you know to to describe your self useful for the company you can also use uh, your functional portfolio with keywords there's a list of keywords on the website um, MS Office templates are there you can use different um, templates to uh, use a, a ready-made template of resume resume writing worksheets are there and you can access to simplicity we will give you resources in uh, wet feet wallet and resume builder templates so it's a complete resource pack for resume writing uh, and this was all for today's talk. In today's talk, um, um, what we did, we started with a workshop regarding uh, formal letter writing and informal memorizing. Then we had our listening activity, and then we had we quickly revised our understanding of resume writing. And I gave you a few resources to go deep into it if you want some more information that uh, you need to uh, customize your needs. So this was all for today's talk. I'll see you in the next lecture now. Inshallah. Allah Hafiz.